This is six canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, 9 chapter 43rd verse. Dear Lord, you are omniscient and therefore you know very well why we have taken shelter at your lotus feet, which provides shade that gives relief from all material disturbances. Since you are the supreme spiritual master, you know everything. We have sought shelter at half your lotus feet for instruction. Please give us relief by counteracting our present distress. Your lotus feet are the only shelter for a fully surrendered devotee and are the only means for subduing all the tribulations of this material world. So Bhagavatam is recording, that means it's a fact. Vedavyasa does not record anything which is not perfect. The Devadas have gone to the Lord and they are, they are, Devadas are offering prayers. And what are these prayers? They are factual statements. It is not a flattery, it's a fact. What is the fact? Now they are talking about taking shelter at the Lord's lotus feet. Bhagavad Gita, there is a shloka. Sarva dharma parityaja maam ekam sharanam raja. So taking shelter means taking shelter of the lotus feet. You understand? So living in the temple means we are living at the lotus feet of the Lord. That is the meaning of living in it. We are living at the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. What does it mean? Now how do you get the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord? You take shelter of an Acharya. Then you get shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Otherwise it's, it's a story. And I have a devotee question, so many people say it's bogus. You are not a devotee. There was one person who came to Maksanda Prabhupada was talking to his devotees. So somebody uh, said, uh, Guru Maharaj, somebody has come to meet you. He says the devotee of Krishna. He said, I don't want to meet him. Because we, we are not devotees of Krishna. The devotees are devotees of Krishna. If somebody says I am a devotee of Krishna, he is a cheat. It is not possible also. Krishna also does not give himself directly. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, that the Vidhi Pranipatena, Vari Prashnena Sevaya, Upadakshana Tite Gyanam Gyanina Tattva Darshina. Krishna says, if you want to know about me, that the Vidhi takes shelter of my pure devotee. Pranipatena. Pranipatena means total shelter. That is same, shelter of the lotus feet. Pari Prashnena. And then he is instructing you, get some queries, please go and do some seva. Because that's the only transaction. So then, Upadakshin Tite Jnana, he will give you Krishna. Why? Because he knows. The Prabhupada is saying, unfortunately, my Guru Maharaj had to leave the world because he collected so many neophyte disciples. In this world, collecting neophyte disciples just like the politicians have so many followers. It's bogus. There's no point in collecting, it's a headache. It's like suppose you're training people for say IS and the person is not studying, it's a headache you're taking. Therefore they have minimum qualification, otherwise they don't admit. If they know I cannot do anything, you simply will be exasperated. So it's very important. I want to get Krishna, we should be serious whether I want Krishna. I don't want Krishna, yes. The whole metal world has been created for that only. For tamasha going on, people have nothing to do with Krishna. Just enjoy. So devatas are aware of this fundamental truth. Uh, they are aware, but it's not easy. 
to come to that platform of PR devotion service, totally taking shelter of the Lord. They are not on the planet. But it's true, whenever they have trouble, they come to the Lord. Pure devotees are in constant touch with the Lord. Their devotion is so intense that every moment they see the Lord. Because if they separate for the Lord for a moment, they go into huge pain. Just like a mother, an example. It's a reflection, it's not real, it's a reflection. But in the middle world, what happens? And the mother doesn't see the child, it becomes very vacuum. I think we are going to get a little bit of a reflection. Asli to soche kya ho ga? The pilot. Okay, you want to deal with the reflection? The metal word is meant for people who want so called relations. But actually, in spiritual, it is real. It's a real relationship. So, pure devotee cannot live in separation from the Lord. So, Krishna is always present in front of them. Premanjana, Churita, Bhakti Lochanena. Santa Sadeva, always is present. Santa Sadeva Hridayosh Vidokayanti. Yama Shama Sundara, so beautiful. Achinte Guna Sarupa. Because in the world relationships are for some time only, a few days and that broken. It's temporary relationship, based on body, not on the fact. It's like somebody said, died, he said, my father has gone, my father has gone. That means he never saw his father. Father, my father has gone, the body is lying there. He never saw. In this world, the relationships are not based on fact. It is based on illusion. So now, why does it Krishna insist that if you want to know about me, you have to go to a devotee? Why? Why does Krishna insist that? Because he wants to make a devotee more important than him. Why? Krishna is a property of his devotees. Krishna se tomara, Krishna dite paro. Bhakti Rathakur says, Krishna is yours. And if you want, you can give. Take okay? it. Krishna is yours. Huh? Krishna say tomara, Krishna dite par. Krishna is yours, and if you want, you can give. So Krishna is the property of a. It is pocket. Take. He will just ask. Right? Ask. Just like suppose somebody has some prasada. The Prabhuji, a little prasadam you can give, yeah. The same way, Acharya is having Krishna in his pocket. Yeah. Prabhupada, please, Krishna you can give. Okay. If you wish it, you can give, go. You just have to lift your hand and ask. Just like, you know, when prasadam is getting distributed, you see in big temples that happen. They are distributing prasadam. Sometimes, what do you have to do? You have to all fold your hand and everybody goes and then he gives. So similarly, you have to just ask. You have to ask. Therefore, this is a very nice statement. In uh, various places in the Bhagavatam, it is said uh, that we have to do Abhisheka, uh, Raju Abhisheka. We have to do full Abhisheka of the dust of the lotus feet of a devotee. Then you can understand Krishna. Madhurina Krishna Paratosato, I mean, Prahlad Maharaj also concludes, he says, no, not possible, unless you take shelter of a devotee. The same way when King Rahuguna is interested by Jada Bharata, he also says, Unless you take shelter of a devotee, you will not be able to understand. This is how the Krishna consciousness works. Uh, if not, I will understand. What do you know? What do you know first? We have to analyze ourselves and we see what I am situated with, where I am situated. If you are honest, you can say, I don't have anything actually. As for the ultimate goal of life, I am total zero. Nothing happened. Next life, what will, what will happen to me? Anything can happen. We can become a home in the stool, we can become a cat, I can become a dog. I am in such a dangerous position. When unless you understand you are in a dangerous position, you will never chant seriously. You will never chant seriously. Okay, I have a devotee, I come to that. I will chant seriously. Correct? And when you know it is so dangerous, you don't know the danger. We don't know what dangerous position we are situated in. Thus, din ki jindagi hai, thak nikalenge, uske baad kaha jayenge. And am I holding the Lord's lotus feet in my heart? No. I am holding so many nonsense things in my heart. It's gone. Just like Bharat Maharaj, little affection for a deer. No sinful activity, watch out. No sinful activity, just little affection for the deer. Had to take back a birth in the world as a deer only. Let me be very careful. No attachment should be there in the middle of it. We do in this world things as a duty. It is not that devotee doesn't do. 
And when you do things as a duty, you do better than the people who are doing in the attachment. Attachment is because it is false, it has no meaning. See, if you live in truth, it is always good. If you live in illusion, it is being madness. Okay? It's like sometimes somebody is sleeping. And in sleep he is watching a nice dream. You wake him up. Nah, I'll sleep a little more. Nice dream is going on. So people want to continue their dream-like pleasures. Not only that, many people have understood this word in an illusion, they say. But they want to enjoy the illusion. Such jokers. 90% of the people in India have only one shloka. Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya. Okay, that's okay. Spirit is truth, I understood. And the, this world is illusion. Okay, that is also understood. It's not illusion, it's a fact. <laughs> but even if I follow your argument next, you are saying this world is illusion, then why you are enjoying the illusion? You are not honest, correct? You are cheating. A word is something in the illusion. I should reject it, no? Most of the people in India now follow impersonalism. Their Mahavakya is Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya. The truth is spiritual and word is an illusion. Okay, granted. Then, if it is illusion, reject it, no? That means you are, you are not accepting what you are saying, simply you are speaking. The Prabhupada says, they are very expert in enjoying this illusion. Even though they say it is illusion, no? You should, if it is illusion, dump it. Careful, they are not truthful. But devotee is better than them. Why? Because he doesn't say this word is illusion. He understands this word is a fact. It is a temporary fact. So I dutifully deal with the tamasha. Because I have two kind of duties now. Just like you are driving a car, you have two responsibilities. You have to take care of the driver, you have to take care of the car. Right? But which is primary, driver or the car? The driver. Sometimes, what happens? An aeroplane is flying, an aeroplane has to... Engine is not working, aerogen is cra crashing. What does the flight, uh, the pilot do? Jumps out, ejects out. His life is more important than the aircraft. Agreed or not? You are driving a car. The car is about to go into major accident. Car is going down the hill. What you do now? Save yourself. Jump out of the car. What is more important? Driver or the car? The driver. The spiritual life is therefore more important than material life. Material life will go on. You should not get too much worked about it. It goes on. We try with our basic intelligence. Therefore, Bhakti no Thakur, for the people who are working, had a formula of 8 plus 8 plus 8. 8 hours enough for the body. Correct? You are bathing, you are eating, you are sleeping. Finished. 8 hours. His was different. He was spending just 2 hours. You cannot imitate him. But his instruction was 8 plus 8. In the 8 hours you keep for your spiritual life. Your chanting, reading, studying. And 8 hours you keep for material life. Because that is ideal. You should come to that ideal. But not that we close spiritual life. What is the society doing? 5 minutes they don't keep for spiritual life. 5 minutes they come. They have 10 hours for TV. For five minutes they don't have a spiritual life. Isn't this society doing like that? Five minutes nahi. Unko bolo, ek mala jab kolo nahi ho sakta. That also they struggle. Say, please chant Hare Krishna Mantra. It will take six, seven minutes. How many people are doing it? And once you begin, then there is a hope that it will grow, it will grow and they will become devoted. So now Devata has understood this situation. That unless they surrender, there is no way we can be saved. Because this is a very important principle. In Bhagavad Gita, there is one more shloka for that. What is that? Devi Esha Gurumai Mahamaya Duratthaya Maam Eviya Prapadyante Maya Vetam Taranti Dei. Very simple shloka. Devi Esha Gurumai. Krishna says this metal energy is Maya energy. Mama Maya Duratthaya. You can't cross over. But only one way you can cross is Maam Eviya Prapadyante. If you take my shelter, there is a very nice example given of a big tree. What happens in the tree? Tree is gives nice shade, cooling shade. If you run below the tree, what happens? It should. You feel so relieved from the heat. An example. Vedic time, every example is natural. They are not talking about an AC, they are not talking about... People are walking on the road at their time. They are not using your cars. Correct? You say in the car, inside car I can put on AC, there is a shade. They are giving natural example. They live with nature. When you walk on the road, what is there? They are not having road also like your tar road. They are in mud path. They are walking in thoughts. 
you go sit below a tree, you get relief from the heat. Correct? Yeah? The heat hitting your head, you get relief. The same way when you take shelter of Krishna, you get relief from the mental energy immediately. How much time it takes? Immediately. But just we have to come and sort inside the shade of the tree. The same way, such a nice example. When you take shelter of Krishna, there are so many turbulences I am in. Uh, there is turbulence of, uh, of my body, the turbulence of my mind, the turbulence because of other people around me, turbulence because of nature. There is so much turbulence I am in. All of us, Adhyatmi Gadi, Bhauti Gadi, Devi we are all in disturbance. And we are very disturbed. But if we take shelter of the Krishna's lotus, we become peaceful. Just like some terrorist is chasing you. He wants to kill you. You go to some very, very powerful man and he says, okay, come inside, stay in my house. After that, you have any tension? You know, he's very powerful. He cannot, you will not even enter this house. So similarly, Maya will not even touch you. And why she, she, she should touch you? Her business is finished now. Just like uh, by the police, say a kingdom is there, a king is there. Somebody is rebellious to the king. And he has been, Maya has been told to arrest all such people and put them inside jail. That is going on. And Maya is behind you. And you run to the king and take a shelter. Oh no, Maya's business is over. Police business is till only till that time you are a criminal. Police has no business when you are not a criminal. So when you, you are a servant of Krishna, but you are not serving Krishna. That's the problem. Therefore, Maya comes into the picture to punish you. The nature of the soul is it's a servant of Krishna. Jiva Krishna Das. When Sanatana Goswami asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is the Sarupa of the soul? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Jivera Sarupa hai Krishna Nitya Dasa. Kaya means who am I? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu answered, Jiva Sarupa hai Krishna Nitya Dasa. It's the eternal servant of Krishna. That is the Sarupa. That is the nature of the soul which cannot be taken away from the soul. People are ready to do. You know, dog walks in the street. They'll walk behind their dog. We have seen 20 times. And then dog passes stool. In some countries, you have to pick it up. You have to pick it up. The dog passes stool. They pick that also. Just imagine. So much service are ready to do to a dog, but they don't want to for one second serve God. But actually, they are servants. Okay? The original nature of the living entity is servant. But servant of what? Servant of Krishna. But they don't know that. And they are trying to serve so many kama, krodha, other things. They are serving. But if they come to serve Krishna, their life will be very peaceful and happy and successful. So this is what the shloka is saying. If you take shelter of Krishna. So how do I take shelter of Krishna? Take a shelter of the Acharya. You cannot take shelter directly of Krishna. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna could directly see Krishna and take his shelter. I think that's fine. Krishna was present. Where Acharya is present. You have to take shelter of the Acharya. And he guides he guides you how to take shelter of Krishna. You do not know. And what is basically meaning taking shelter? This has been broken into six parts. Sharanagrati. I remember I was in Bangalore, one lady I met, she was telling that if she was a widow, young widow. So she was telling that instead of getting married again, all the widows here, you know, in their locality, in part of life, many people do that. We all sit together and you know, do some bhajana and read Bhagavad Gita. Sharanagati. Many groups are there of yours. They call them Sharanagati. It's a nice principle. Okay. Oh, but what are the six ways of Sharanagati? Surrender. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains there are six principles. What are the six principles of surrender? Number one, you say, I want to surrender to Krishna. It's your choice. Nobody is going to force. What are the six principles of surrender? First principle, if Krishna likes something and I don't like, Still, I'll do it. Arjuna did not want to fight the war. Krishna said, fight. Okay, I'll fight. First principle. What is the second principle? Krishna does not like something. And I like. I'll not do it. Okay? I want to smoke. Krishna does not like it. Okay. I'll not. That is Sharanagati. What is Sharanagati? Bhakti Dilme, it's all rubbish. It has to manifest. First, first principle of devotion is obedience. Devotion has no meaning in the day. It's all fantasy. Yeah. Understood? First principle of devotion is obey. 
then devotion will come later. So what is the first principle? If Krishna wants something you don't want, you will do it. And Krishna does not want something but you want to do it, you will not do it. Two. Third principle of surrender. Krishna is my protector. Like the Devatas. That surrender means that. Then God to Krishna. Krishna, please protect us. We don't know how to fight with this with the Asura. He is my protector. The faith, he is will protect me. Avasya Rakshibe Krishna. That is the statement of Rupa Goswami. Krishna will definitely protect me. That faith we should have. Otherwise, just imagine. I, there was somebody you know, who had a life and a situation at devotee. So after the whole thing was over, I called and said, what was the condition when you are in a life and death? You made your operation life and death. How was you successful in the operation? You survived. But what was your mood when you are going for the operation? So I just pray to Krishna, please protect me. I said, yes. Devotee is always praying to the Lord for protection. Then, next after that, after that, what is the mean? Then Krishna is my guide. He will guide me. My Lord, please guide me. What should I do? I am not able to become your devotee. Please guide me. That is fourth. And then next. Always be meek and humble in front of the Lord. Never think you are great. In front of the Lord we are not even innocent. In front of the Acharya. Always be meek and humble. You should know what is the position. And then for the last. Have no desire other than desire of the Lord. The sixth. So these six actually the devotees are analyzed very nicely. It constitutes surrender. What they're saying of surrender to the Lord? Surrender doesn't mean in the mind. Here I am surrender. Surrender means are you following the six principles? That is surrender. So we should check. Throughout the day, what you are doing, I say I am surrender to Krishna. Whatever activity I am doing, is it pleasing to Krishna? Am I doing something which is displeasing to Krishna? Am I being always meek and humble in front of the Lord? Do I have any desire in the desire of the Lord? You go an instrument in the hand of the Lord. And then you know, if anything you are not doing, I am wasting Krishna's time because I have become Krishna's instrument. You understand? I am an instrument in the hand of Prabhupada. Rather, let's say, take the Acharya. So if some, somebody is wasting my time, you are wasting Prabhupada time. We can tell him. But provided you are absorbed in Prabhupada's mission. Somebody is wasting, hey, you are wasting Prabhupada time. Very nice. Very nice meditation. But you should come to that platform, fully surrender to the Acharya, and then you can speak to them. Okay? Shri Prabhupada Ki, Shri Madhvagatam Ki. Oh, uh-huh.